Kyrie made his grand return against the Cavs. And let's put it this way, said Steve Nash after the game, we've got a lot of work to do. Nets and Cavs, and as Nick predicted, some problems on the defensive end as the Nets couldn't stop Colin Sexton. He dropped 42 as Brooklyn falls in double overtime. Kyrie with 37 wasn't enough, though. Take a listen to this. I think any one of us would definitely take a win <laughs> over all those, you know, just great stats. You know, those are sound incredible <laughs> for a first game out for a few great teammates, uh, just first time touching the floor. But like I said, we're we're not so much consumed about what we can do. You know, we're we're more or less responsible for, you know, like I said, putting these pieces together and making it work. And offensively, it clearly wasn't enough tonight. You know, we still needed to get stops on the other end. So that's going to be the tale of our season is how committed are we to that end of the floor. And with that, we welcome in Chris Broussard. Broussard, good morning. After you watched this last night, how worrisome was the Nets' double overtime loss? Well, first of all, and I'll say this in all honesty, <laughs> it, was good to see, it was good to see Kyrie smile. It, it was good to see him yeah. smiling yeah. after that game. I, I really mean that. But, um, look, it's not worrisome. Uh, it was actually quite predictable. You guys know I came on here yesterday, and I talked about the Miami Heat as a reference point. 2010, the big three, LeBron, D-Wade, Bosh coming together. Yep. 80 points in a loss in their first game together. And remember, they also started the season 9-8. and eight. So it's going to take time no matter who your big three players are. So I actually think last night was just what the doctor ordered. Because the, the offense wasn't terrific. It was disjointed at times. It was uh, my turn, your turn at times. But they still put up big numbers, obviously, against the second-best defensive team in the league to this point, which is Cleveland, believe it or not. The big three all got good numbers. The role players, Jeff Green scored. Uh, De uh, DeAndre Jordan scored. So they saw... Despite having a good offensive game, despite the big three all getting their numbers, we still lost because our defense was atrocious. And that's an understatement. Cleveland was the worst offensive team in the league. They're without Kevin Love and their third leading scorer, Darius Garland, and they still shoot 51%, 50% from three. They made Colin Sexton look like Steph Curry. It was that bad, but you just heard Kyrie Irving after the game. When have we really heard Kyrie ever talk about defense? You just, Steve Nash said defense. That is what we have right. to work on more than anything. So I like the <laughs> fact that you never heard his mentor. You never heard his mentor, Mike D'Antoni, now an assistant coach with the Nets. You never heard him say such a thing about defense. Defense is commitment and concept, especially when you don't have great individual defenders. If the Nets are indeed committed to not being a failure, not being a failure in everyone's eyes, then they will focus on the defensive end. Not get great there, but get good enough yeah. to win the East, yeah. which is all I've been saying. Uh-huh. Okay. Broussard, the most interesting <laughs> thing Broussard said there, and I hope it wasn't lost on the audience, is the Cleveland Cavaliers went into that basketball game the worst offense in the NBA. Dead last. And they scored 147 points without their second and third best offensive players. So I do agree, the first step to defeating a problem is admitting you have a problem, but then you must actually be able to defeat it. And the Nets do not have the personnel to defeat this problem. They, I'm sorry, you've got, you don't have other than Durant, a single reliable defender and they know it which is why when Sexton was killing them at the end of the game they let literally if we run the Sexton highlights what you'll see is every guy on the Nets gets a chance and the make it take it Nets couldn't get a single noteworthy stop and by the way they also were I mean just watch Sexton kill them and they also had three opportunities to stop the Cavs in the first overtime, up three points, and they failed all three times. That's some solid defense by Kyrie. Just give him a shot. I like it. And then, so, hey, say, KD, I you mean, want a chance? That that's in your eye, too. What do you want him to do? Oh, it was great defense. That was good right. defense. Okay, so Some wait, of that by the way, look defense, at this. Nick, stop it. 
Oh, oh, yeah, and this is good rebounding then. Good defense, good rebounding. They just score every time. <laughs> yeah, this is great defense. Hey, That's good let's, defense. let's give him. Oh, it's great defense. Just a three made in his eye. That's all. No, it's great. They're fine, guys. They've got they've got four guys you can rely on. You have one defender you can rely on. The make it take it nets are gonna annihilate everyone at Drew League and at Rucker. Come the NBA playoffs, though, they're gonna have some problems, Brandon. Gonna have a bit of problems getting Jenna. getting to the finals. <laughs> they're gonna have problems getting to the Eastern Conference Finals. What's up, Brandon? Jenna, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Don't say that uh, Nick Mute. predicted this. This was not a prediction talking about the next de the, the Nets defense. This was desperation. He know that that's the only thing he can hold on to for the next two months. The reality is this. Nobody in the NBA is playing real defense right now. The only teams that's playing real defense are the younger guys like the Ca uh, the Cavaliers. That's it. Man, come mid-March, you're going to see who this team really is. It takes time. Nick, you played basketball. You actually played on a really good high school team. When you walked in that gym, the first thing they talked about was defense. The first thing they talked about was communication. That was their first night together. It's going to take time for them to right. get in the rhythm. Are they going to be a top five defense? Probably not. But will they be a defense that can go to the finals, that they can compete 100%? And whoever they're playing against, there's going to be so much pressure on them to keep up with an onslaught of threes and an onslaught of baskets back to back to back to back. So, Nick, if you want to talk defense, right, because you got two months to do it, mm -hmm. then let's talk about a glimpse mm -hmm. of, of what you're going to see. Let's roll the tape at 830. This is what you saw in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter. They went into the fourth quarter down by nine, eight minutes, 30 seconds left. They're down by 13. Now the game is on the line. Mm -hmm. Now we know, okay, let's go play. We're all together. Everybody's watching us. Everybody's going to be talking about us. And what did we see? Stop after stop after stop. And then, it, right, and Kevin, right. the play that Nick's talking about, talking about, oh, Kyrie didn't play good defense. He just let the man <laughs> shoot it. Man, Sexton had an all-time high in freaking efficiency. There was nothing he could do. They yeah. wasn't even supposed to go into double overtime. Okay, yeah, they shouldn't have. They should have won the game. Because not only is your defensive problem, that's the first game that I watched, Broussard, when I said, ooh, Steve Nash, rookie coach. You can start to see it flare up a little bit. Well, first of all, you're up three. You want to follow Colin Sexton? Nope, let him shoot one in Kyrie's eyes. All right, goes into overtime. I disagree with that, but I understand it's a philosophy. Now you're in double overtime, and Colin Sexton is cooking everybody. Do you want to call a timeout? You want to break the rhythm a little bit? You want to get some sugar-free Gatorade in the sideline? Nah, let's play through it. Let's have the game get out of hand. Easily, two options. Blow a timeout, ask for a timeout, or do the old Jason Kidd. Throw some water on yourself, stop the clock. Whatever you need to do to break <laughs> Colin Sexton's rhythm, give it a shot. The third thing is, while you're at the timeout, drinking some sugar-free Gatorade, Hey guys, anybody tired? Anybody need a breather? Right. Because I played everybody for 50 minutes, even though I told Malika Andrews that I didn't <laughs> want Kyrie to go over 40. So for those three reasons, I overtime. thought that Steve Nash looked... But Brandon, they went into double overtime already at the push in 40 minutes. Four. So I thought Steve right. Nash was very disappointing performance when he could have won the game just by fouling Colin Sexton before he even got to double overtime. Great points, Wilds. And you, you're right. Look, it's a philosophy. Some coaches like to foul in that situation. Others don't. But Steve Nash clearly got caught up in doing what the rest of us were doing last night. Watching to see the big three. He was caught up. That's all it was to it. He forgot. They, Stop, their Chris. minutes were ridiculous. He didn't even play Landry Shamit. I don't know if Landry Shamit's in the doghouse or what, but Nash got caught up. He's got a lot to learn as well. <laughs> Remember, too, th this Nick, they've got three open <laughs> roster spots. They've got the disabled player exception. They will bring oh, in defensive-minded yes. veterans. That's right. Yeah, all they, those they great will. NBA and, and players and, and that are currently unemployed. Yes, let's do no, it. No, no, no. Remember, early. you know what they're... I think China's season is about to end. That's right. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Is Nick, Bismack Piano? I, I think Bismack is not on a roster. Uh, let's do it. Yes. Uh, Yes, disabled players, players will be cut. Open roster spots. Players, oh, yeah. Players currently on the rosters will be cut. Remember that. That always happens. Yes, that's Some right. of those veterans will want to join the Nets. And so yeah. you're, you're getting way ahead of yourself, Nick. Rain it in a little bit. Rain it in. Because you know. I agree. Regret the players that are cut. And, and other teams. Chris Broussard, thank you.